Hello and good morning. Here we are on a Sunday and uh, our Sabbath rest day. Praise God. I pray that you are restful in your spirit and the Lord has a word for you today. I've been believing God for a word every single morning and we're calling it morning watch and the Lord is faithful. He has been providing the word of the Lord. Uh, the Bible says that we should not live on bread alone, but by on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. This is manna. This is bread for us to live on. This is our daily bread. And I believe many of you who are watching this are going to uh, discern that this is a word for you specifically. Listen, prophecy is uh, for your edification. It's for your exhortation. That means encouragement. And it is for your equipping. It is to equip you. It's for you to know the times and the seasons so that you can operate uh, in accordance and in alignment with the will of God. <clears throat> and so you can be, <clears throat> excuse me, so you can be in alignment in the kingdom and, uh, and uh, walking in step with heaven. So I'm going to pray briefly just to invite uh, the spirit of God to visit and to calm us and to settle us and to open our hearts and ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. Good morning, Father. We honor you. We bless you. You are the Lord. You are the Lord, our God, Elohim. Oh, God, you are the Lord Almighty. You are the Lord, our righteousness. You are holy. You are beautiful. Oh, Lord, and we praise you. We exalt you. God, this morning is a new mercy for us. We don't deserve this day, God, you have withheld judgment. You have withheld consequences. You have redeemed us from the law through the blood of your son. And God, we're just grateful. God, I pray now that your spirit will be with us and minister to us in a deep place in our inner being so that we can minister to you and your people and walk in step with you, Holy Spirit, that we can abide in you and your word, can abide in us and we can bear fruit Loving you as we love one another. God, thank you for taking us deeper, bringing us higher, and sharpening us, Lord. In the name of Jesus, it is my prayer that you now take over my mind and my mouth, God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Amen. So this morning I was in the spirit in prayer. Uh, I got a dream from the Lord and I'm just going to um, just share the generalities with you. I was at a high school reunion. So you go back, right? You're going back and you're seeing people and you're getting updates on how people are doing. And I remember seeing people that I did not really in the natural go to high school with, but I knew them in the spirit as people I went to high school with, and they did not look good. They they looked stagnant, like they had not um, been flourishing. They didn't look like they were living the abundant life. They did not look like they were living in joy. They did not look like they were in step with the spirit of God. They weren't shining. They didn't have the unspeakable joy of Jesus. And, and, and as I was driving, one of our former teachers came up to us and uh, it, it was the same thing. He just, and the word foolishness just came to my spirit as I was praying over this dream that a lot of uh, the people were not experiencing uh, the, the manifold wisdom of God. They were walking in a foolishness. They were blind. And uh, it really upset me as I began to seek the Lord. I kept hearing the word contend. I kept hearing the word contend. And so I'm going to take you to that scripture in just a moment. But before I do that, I'm going to share with you what the Spirit of God said to me as I began to uh, minister to him and ask him what this dream was about. And he says, uh, Frank, it's time for my people to enter into higher learning. Ooh, glory to God. He said, it is time for my people to enter into higher learning. So what do we know about high school? High school is a preparatory phase before you go to an institution of higher learning, such as college or uh, your uh, community college, glory to God. And so um, I pray that you hear the spirit of God saying that he wants to mature you. He wants to mature you. And I'm going to look up a verse of scripture right now. Oh, glory. Glory to God. But I just want to remind you that God says we are to go from faith to faith, that we are to go from uh, uh, 
glory to glory. And so he is encouraging us to grow, to grow into places of higher learning. So what do we know about higher things in the scriptures? Jesus, uh, the Lord God said, my ways are higher. My thoughts are higher. He even says that uh, your, his thoughts are not our thoughts. And so there is a higher way of thinking. There's a higher way of, of eating, uh, living rather. There is a higher way of experiencing the Lord God. And uh, I'm looking up this verse of scripture. Glory to God. Just bear with me. It is in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. This is Paul writing. He says, And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people. We are spirit, we are supposed to be spiritual people. So Paul's saying, I can't talk to you like that. But as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. So think about this. If you've ever been to a high school reunion, I've never been to our high school reunion. I can imagine you've been to a high school reunion. You might notice some people have not matured, that they're still almost living in high school. And I see this on Facebook a lot, that people seem to still be living with the same mindset, like they were in, they're, they're still in high school. And Paul is saying, I, I can't speak to you as spiritual people. I can't speak to you as people of higher learning because you're still babes. He says in verse two of 1 Corinthians 3, I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you were not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. What is that saying? Many of us could be in the faith for years. We can be in the faith for decades. And the Lord is saying, you need to contend for higher learning because some of us are not mature in the faith even after decades. For he says, you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal? And behaving like mere men. So he's saying being in division is an example of walking in carnality. But some of it is just not living by the word. Some of it is just plainly not surrendering your life to Christ. And so the, the, Lord, the Lord again said, it's time for my people to enter into higher learning. This is an invitation. We're about to enter into the Hebrew year 5784. We're in the decade of the mouth and four in the Hebrew language represents a tent door, an opportunity. God is inviting us into another stage, another station of life, another chapter to enter into a higher way of thinking. He wants you to be a spiritual person. That doesn't mean that you just go and you listen to all different spiritual things. No, it means that you're living by the Holy Spirit. And again, I kept hearing the word contend. I was before the Lord. I kept hearing the word contend. And I knew the scripture. I said, Lord, you're telling me to go to the scripture where we talk about contending for the faith. Listen to this. Jude verse three says, beloved, do you know that you are loved? Do you know that you are loved? He calls you beloved. While I was very diligent to write you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith, which was once for all delivered to the saints. Ooh. So Jude is writing and saying, listen, uh, I, I wanted to write to you about our common salvation, but, but you need to contend for the faith that was delivered to everyone. What is he talking about? What do you mean contend? I have faith. Faith is enough, right? What do you mean contend for the faith? Well, he goes on to say, for certain men have crept in unnoticed. This stuff is subtle. Who long ago were marked out for this condemnation, ungodly men who turn the grace of our God into lewdness and deny the only God and our Lord Jesus Christ. What does he say? He's saying that you can pervert the grace of God. And I think this is pervasive in the church, that, that we're not mature because we've said, oh, I have grace so I can continue to do whatever I want to do. Listen, just this morning in prayer, the Spirit of God asked me to surrender something, and I did it gladly. It's something that I, I, I like to do, uh, but something the Spirit of God said is not good for you to continue to do this because I'm raising you up to another level of maturity. And this is the deal. When you enter into a door of 
of elevation. God is going to be promoting many people into new stages and stations of life that there's usually a cost to that. And you need to give up something because your, your mind needs to be renewed again. Mm. Some of us need a renewal of our mind so that we can uh, access things that God has for us so that we don't stay immature. Immature. God wants you to have faith. He wants you to have faith that is living faith. He wants your faith to be alive. The Lord says he wants you to have proof of your faith. Some people, they think it's just good enough to be saved. But Jesus says, no, 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 no. I didn't just come to give you life. I came to give you life more abundantly. It means that the uh, the, the word of God to you is that you are not just to be saved, but you are to be vibrant. You are to look like Jesus in the earth. And Jude, Jude writes about how this grace has been perverted and people think they can still live in lewdness. And then he uses Sodom and Gomorrah as an example of the judgment of God against people who think they're saved and think they have faith, but they're not walking in faith. He says Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them were in a similar manner, giving themselves over to sexual immorality and gone after strange flesh and are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Some of us need to understand because you, just because you have faith in Jesus, James writes, the demons believe and tremble. Demons believe in Jesus. God is saying, you need to contend for your faith. You need to begin to ask yourself some vital questions. Am I showing proof of my faith? Am I fighting my carnality? Am I submitting my flesh to the spirit of God? This is not a message many of us want to hear, but it's an invitation. The Lord says, contend. The scriptures tells us that without faith, without works, faith is dead. He wants you to have living faith. We are encouraged to show our faith by what we do. How is your mouth? Is your mouth owned by Jesus? Oh, do you, do you submit every word to the Lord? Every word you type in this social media platform, have you submitted it to God? We don't want to hear this kind of stuff because we want this lewd idea of grace. Oh, grace, you know, grace is going to, you know, I'm, I'm forgiven. I can do what I want. No, no, no. That's dead faith. God has more for you. He has an institution of higher learning called his word and his spirit. He wants to work those things out of you. The Bible says that we should work out our soul salvation with fear and trembling, meaning you have salvation. Now walk it out with fear and trembling. Fear of what? Fear of God, the one who has the power to put your soul and body in hell. He's someone to fear. He's someone to acknowledge in all of your decisions. He's someone to acknowledge in the words you speak. He's someone to acknowledge in the way you live, in the way you your habits should be submitted to God. Man, God, what's up with this habit I have? So what do we fight? If the Lord's saying contend, what do we fight against? We fight against our tendency to just go through the motions. We fight against our tendency to have a lazy faith. James chapter two and verse 20 says, but do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? And then he says, was not Abraham our father, meaning our example, justified by works when he offered Isaac, his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together with his works and by works, faith was made perfect? <laughs> he says in verse 24, so you see then that a man is justified by works and not by faith only. So the question is, are you justified? Has God accounted your faith for righteousness? There is a determination necessary for your faith to be seen. We must fight our flesh that only wants to receive blessings or salvation or whatever God has for us. We have to be soldiers and ambassadors for God. But none of this is possible without the spirit of God. So some of us need to be born again. Are you born again? Is there a difference? Like after you met Jesus, did your mind become new? Are you easily convicted by the Holy Ghost? Some of us need to be revived. Are you just stagnant? You're not going to church. You're just watching church. You have no desire to go to Bible study anymore. You're not studying God's word. You're not seeking him in stillness to hear his voice. 
Maybe you don't even read books that, that offer you insight and wisdom on how to live a supernatural lifestyle. You just look like everybody else. If that's you, God wants you to surrender your life again. Are you living what you believe? Are you living what you read? Are you even reading what you believe? Are you surrendered to God? Lord, the Lord wants you to fight your flesh that only wants you to live the way you've always lived. Paul said, I can't, I can't speak to you as spiritual people because you're carnal and, 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 and you're babes in Christ. He's saying, I want you to be on a higher level where you're hearing God's heart. You're living by the heart of God. So we need to repent and be baptized in the spirit and fire. God says, contend. You got to fight your flesh to, to, to submit and you got to contend for your surrender. You've got to start walking away from the lifestyle of Sodom and Gomorrah. Are you just living in immorality? Are you, do you have sins that you, you hide and you just say, I'm going to keep this for myself? And in the spirit of God, I'm going to pray now to impart to you the power to contend and anointing on your life of fire to burn away stagnation, to burn away lack, in a lackadaisical way of thinking. I'm going to pray for this for you. And listen, this is nothing to play with. This is nothing to play with because there's no satisfaction in the heart of God when you don't live for him. In fact, the Bible says you can become apostate, meaning you think you're saved, but you're not justified because your mind is still where it was before you heard the gospel. You just heard the gospel is a way out of hell. You didn't hear the gospel as a way of life. You didn't hear the kingdom of God bringing you into the family and bringing you into a place of priesthood. You're supposed to be a priest. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I impart now the power to contend in Jesus' name. For you, my brother, for you, my sister, I impart the power to contend, the power to surrender. In the kingdom, fighting looks like surrender. In the kingdom of God, you need to hear this. The power of, of the kingdom is for you to repent by surrender. Not my will, but your will be done. I impart the power to surrender into your spirit now in Jesus' name. I impart the fire of God to burn away every carnal desire and for you to begin to walk out your faith, living in the spirit and walking by the spirit. In Jesus' name, receive the blessing of God. This must be received. It, it's, going to, it's going to contend against your mind that wants to say, oh, I can do what I want to do. I'm saved. No, sister, no, brother. That is not where we are in the faith. We are contending to have faith and works that work together to justify us in the sight of God. With fear and trembling, work out your salvation, says the Lord. Fear me, says God. Fear me, says God. Recognize me as the Lord Almighty. Yes, he is your exceeding great reward, but he is also the Lord, your righteousness. He wants to not just cover you in the blood of Jesus. He wants to remove those things that cause you to be unrighteous. Jude 1 and verse 20 says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your, on your most holy faith, Praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God. That's contending. I pray in the name of Jesus, you will keep yourselves in the love of God, meaning you won't step outside of grace by doing things willfully, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. I pray that into your spirit. The Lord is releasing the power to contend today. Some of us are, are going to church and, and we, we had it planned to go through the motions and the spirit of God saying, no, 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 no. We're not going through the motions anymore. We're not going through the motions. Good morning. Good morning. We're not going through the motions anymore. No, 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 Lord. I want to be justified. I want to be like Abraham who believed that even if you killed Isaac, you had the power to raise him from the dead because your promise was that you would give him a son and you would make him a, a father of nations. You, he knew that you were a God of your word and he was living in the supernatural. He was living as a spiritual person. He was living as a son of the most high God, not just the son of his daddy, Haran. He was the son of God. And that's what I pray for you today. Contend for the faith, meaning surrender. 
surrender everything. I pray when some of you step into church, you just discern the Lord saying, come to the altar. And you don't even wait for the altar call. You just go, I pray that some of you in the altar call does come. You just begin to weep and cry before the Lord because you know you've hurt him. You know you've stepped out of the grace. You know that you have been willfully disobedient. You know you've rebelled against the Lord. You've had a nice outward appearance, but the Lord's looking at your heart and he's not liking what he sees. And he's saying, you've been living in foolishness and blindness. He's saying, no, 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 step out of that and step into my will. Step into my will. I know the thoughts that I have toward you, thoughts of good and not evil, to bring you to a future and a hope. He's got a path for you, but you've got to walk in his path. He says, it's time for my people to walk in a level of higher learning. It's time for my people to enter into higher learning, higher, higher, higher. I pray you have a wonderful day. I bless the Lord for you. I pray you will share this word with people that you know, they've just been stagnant. They've just not walked it out. They've said, I'm saved, but you don't see the evidence. And this is a convicting word. It's a word that's meant to call us into correction. It's a word that's meant to encourage us to believe what God says. It's a word that is not meant to tickle the ear or scratch where you're itching. It is meant to bring you into a solid foundation of Jesus Christ. And that is our assignment as people of God to walk in the truth. Walk in the truth and don't lie against the truth. Don't hide from your flesh. Don't hide anymore. Be transparent before the Lord. Seek him while he may be found. There is not time for everyone. You don't know when he's coming to bring you home. This is a serious word. I pray you like, share, uh, tweet, retweet. I'm on all the platforms this morning to make sure everyone who's assigned to hear this word gets the, the idea that it is time for you to contend for the faith. Contend for your faith. If your faith has not been worth fighting for, if your faith has not been worth you sliding uh, your plate away to fast and pray and seek God's perfect will, then there's more for you. There's a higher learning for you. God does not want you to be as those that I saw in my dream at the, at the high school reunion who are not living in higher learning. They're still living in high school. They're still minors. Oh God, they've not developed into adults in the spirit. They are still minors, even though their age on paper is 45, 46 years old. In my dream, they were still acting like minors. They have a driver's license, but they don't have the authority to walk in a place of authority over others because they're minors in the spirit. God wants you to mature into being an adult in the spirit. What did we read in Hebrews 3? Paul is beckoning them. He's like, I wanted to come to you and speak to you on spiritual things, but you're too carnal. You're still living in the natural realm. You're living in the natural realm. Your mind is in the natural. He's saying, bring your mind into the spirit realm which means you need to read the word and have a desire to read it. You pray for a desire. You live your life by prayer. You live your life by supplication. You live your life by surrender. You live your life by eating the word of God. You live your life in his presence. That's what abundant life is. And I want to show you what it looks like, but it's got to be the spirit. It's got to be between you and the Lord. You've got to say yes. I've got to go. I pray you get this word into your spirit, deep into your spirit. I pray you cover it with the, the soil of your heart and that you receive the, uh, the word of God. Until next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord uh, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. We'll see you again soon, hopefully tomorrow morning for another morning watch. Bye-bye.